You're listening to your superpowered mind on the Superpower Up podcast, the show that investigates the innate power within your brain to create lasting change. Hi, everyone. This is Kristen Maxwell, and you are listening to your superpowered mind. We have a really fun topic today. We're going to be talking to Wendy Yellen about using eidetic imagery to unlock your self-improvement potential. Wendy is a transformational expert who uses a process called eidetics to help individuals unlock their full potential and remove the blocks that have been holding them back from happiness and success. Wendy has been named one of the international top three transformational experts in her field, which is truly amazing. Um, one, we have a special treat because Wendy is actually going to, in the course of this show, take us through um, and the eidetics experience. And so I'm super excited for you to try it and also for me. So Wendy, welcome to your superpowered mind. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you for being a true leader by being willing to be visible and vulnerable with the experience today. That, that says a lot about you, in my opinion. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes, I am a, I am my own guinea pig sometimes. <laughs> so my, my first question on the show is always, what superpower did you discover as the result of mastering your mind? Okay, so when I read that question and thought about it a lot, I thought to myself, I don't master my mind what I've done in terms of the question that I know that you're asking is I've accessed a deeper part of my mind that isn't my rational, overly rational conscious mind that allows me to connect to something greater and that allows me to my intuition to be greatly increased and other aspects of me to come forward that aren't my conscious rational mind. And that's, that's what you'll get in your listeners or get to experience. So I wouldn't actually call it mastering. I'm, I would call it allowing myself to connect to a deeper part of my mind. Oh, that sounds very, very nice. Um, okay, I'm so excited to try it. Well, so how do you do that? How have you learned how to access that deeper part of your mind? Or what's the process? I think that would be better explained by the experience, but I, I think we're, we're, let me go where I think you want you would like the listeners to hear, which is that if we let's look at what happens when people want something. So often, you can think about New Year's resolutions or or whatever. Whenever we make lists of what we want or we reflect on what we want, so often people say they want something, or and then we we don't do it or we do the opposite, which is very common about being human. So when, and then what we do is we try to pressure ourselves into acting a different way or we berate ourselves because we're acting a certain way. And yet there, there is this other aspect of the mind, which I just was referring to that is there not to regurgitate history or memory, but to offer a handout to us to connect us to the potentials that are underneath the way we think. And that's the part of the mind, the way we think, that I think needs the mastering. Does, does that answer your question or did I go too far afield? No, no. I think that really is true, is our minds don't always, uh, the thinking part of our minds don't always serve us very well. Well, they're not meant to, right? Like the, the, the memories and histories, those are meant to help us tie our shoes again, ride the bike again, know how to hold a fork. Those are things that we don't have to keep relearning. They're meant to help us mm, just smooth or streamline what we normally do. But what the problem is that so many people try to use that part of the brain to change. And it's not what it's for. So it doesn't work. And what happens is people say, I think it was Einstein that said, you, you can't solve the problem on the level at which it was created. And people repeat that 
often, I quote often, but then they, what we all do is continue to try to solve the problem with the head, which is exactly to my mind where it was created. Great. So how do you get out of the head? I'm assuming it's eidetics because that's what you talk about. So, <laughs> yeah, because I used to be, I, I'm, I'm relatively smart. I always did really well in school. That was fairly easy for me. And so I lived, and my success came, I thought, from my intelligence. And I was really proud of my intelligence. And I thought, you know, it had taken me very far. And then I got to a certain point in my life. When I, I don't know how it was, but I just realized if I wanted to go further and deeper and connect more deeply spiritually and otherwise, it wasn't going to come from my head. But the problem was that my head wouldn't let go. So when I first actually heard of eidetics, I went to, I went to New York to hear the, the founder and father of eidetics, Dr. Asin. I went to hear him talk. And I literally, could not understand a word he said. My mind was screaming, trying, wow. trying. It was just so loud I couldn't understand him. And everybody else, most of whom, many of the people there had worked with him before, and they're all nodding and getting into it. And I'm looking <laughs> around and I'm thinking, they have drunk the Kool-Aid and I didn't get any because it was, it was crazy. And I had done years of personal development work because I'm a, a master's in, I have a master's in social work. And I, I had done a lot of processes, traditional and non-traditional. I couldn't understand literally what he was saying. So I was so in my head, I couldn't take anything in on this deeper level. But 20 years later, 20 years later, when I rediscovered him by quote unquote accident, my mind was a little softer then, and I wasn't so holding on, and I wasn't rejecting things and judging things so quickly. And so I, I realized, oh my goodness, this is what I've been looking for. This, this stuff actually changes people. And so I, I jumped in for the three-year training. Wow. So that's funny. So you were very much involved in traditional therapy, it sounds like, um, and personal development, and yet you discovered eidetics and um, found that it was significantly more successful in what creating it, change. Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I when I was in social work school at Smith, I I did my. Th I know you said you're really interested in how people transform. Mm -hmm. Well, I did my thesis on how change happens. And I, I was studying traditional and non-traditional right, of ther therapy, but also non-psychotherapy kinds of techniques. I got certified in lots of them. I really wanted to understand how does a person change? Like I knew it wasn't just by understanding. That's obviously not enough because that doesn't change our behavior enough. It doesn't change how we feel enough. It doesn't change how we quick react to certain situations that push our buttons. And so that's why when I heard Dr. Asin the second time, then I understood this is, to my mind, real transformation. Wow. That's, that's amazing because I do, I am also very, very, um, interested in the process of transformation and one of the things i love about this show is talking to people who are further along really in their journey um and and finding out you know learning from them what they've discovered mm -hmm. well i we are going to take a really short break but um before we go i would love um if you could tell people maybe where they could learn more about you and eidetics and they'll get the chance to hear about it again later, but just quickly now. Hot off the press is my just produced spiritual manifesto, the ancient secret to boost your spiritual practice and your life. And I'm offering it to your listeners as my gift. Uh, you can, it's a manifesto on how not to live a life half lived. And you can get it by going to, www.myspiritualmanifesto.com. Uh, www ah, that sounds great. I'm 
certainly interested in looking at it. Well, hang on, listeners, to come back because we are going to get a taste of eidetics and and see what it really feels like to get out of our brains um, and learn how to use eidetic imagery to unlock your self-improvement potential. Hang on, and we'll see you in a minute. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you're ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Welcome back, everyone. We have been talking to Wendy Yellen about using eidetics to unlock your self-improvement potential. And right now, Wendy, I would love to maybe get a little bit more of an understanding or maybe even a taste of what eidetics is and how it works and, and what, it, what it is. I would love to. I think the, the, the best way to understand what eidetics is is to experience it. You cannot understand it with your head. So let's dive in. And what, to explain to your listeners, Kristen and I, and Kristen and I have never worked together. We're going to do a sample session right here, right in front of you without a safety net. And but I'm going to walk all of you through it to some degree while we're working. I'm working with Kristen. And there are a couple things that can happen here to the listener, to you, the listener, and to Kristen. Is One is that, as she said, as you said, Kristen, we're going to get out of our brains. So something different can be possible. And in that getting out of our brains, there'll be two possibilities, main possibilities. One, you'll get an experience of what's inside of you that's stopping you. Very likely more viscerally and more real of an experience of what's stopping you than you've ever known before, no matter how much personal work you've done. And then there might be a possibility, depending on what Kristen and I do, to experience a softening or a breakthrough in that area. Both of these are extremely valuable. The breakthrough, obviously, that's always really fun, but also really getting viscerally and palpably how you're stopping yourself is super important and very helpful and a beginning. So to do that, uh, I, first, I'm going to ask you, Kristen, and everyone else, come up with something that you would like in this moment to actually experience a shift in, to feel differently about something that's actually important to you. And t- of course, you can pause the recording if you need more time. Kristen, do you know what that would be for you? Um, yes, I have come up. I have, um, yes, I have something. Can Would you, you like me to say what it is? Or? Uh, yes, please. That'll help me help you. Okay. So I have, and I'm, I guess maybe, um, I have three teenage daughters. And um, as a mother, and maybe you can tell me if this is appropriate or not appropriate, I am very much wanting to um, allow them to grow and experience all they need to without maybe going through the same roller coaster myself. Mm. And maybe this is, yes. maybe this is, I'm realizing as I'm saying it, that this is the first thing came up, that maybe it's probably, I don't want to um, break any, um, it's not, very, it's very much not what going on with them, but what goes on with me that I yeah. take on their sadness or, I take on their challenges personally, and I would love not to do that. And mm-hmm. I think l- lots of people take on other people's um, feelings, but yeah. maybe that's just too much. <laughs> so no. um, This is beautiful. And what I love about this, because it's so meaningful for me personally, is that um, we can, in this work and what hopefully we're going to do right now, 
we're affecting not only you, but other generations. And that's so meaning, especially the younger generation, it's so meaningful, because then that'll affect their children if they have them, and their lives and so on. So beautiful. I'd love to do this with you. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So you're saying that you don't want them to grow up as on the same roller coaster that ride that you took when you were a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you want uh, to, you go ahead. Uh, right. And I also want to make sure that, um, right, so that I can let go of my hold on what they're going through. You yes. know, they can go through it okay. without me sort of clinging too tightly to yes. how they do things. And Yes, absolutely. And so it's, uh, you're really taking on that it's what's happening with you, that you take on other people's feelings and their sadness and their challenges. Yes. And you're absolutely right that that's what we do. That's what we do. And it's, it feels very connective in one, on one aspect, but of course you have to let go also, which is what you're really speaking to, especially because there's three teenage daughters. It's, it's starting, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we all, so for each of you listening, you can, I would really encourage you to just follow along with me and Kristen, do the suggestions that I'm suggesting to Kristen. And then at the end, I'll, um, I'll talk a little bit about what probably or could have happened to you because everybody's experience is totally unique. All right. Oh, Kristen, there are so many ways we could go here because there are thousands of eidetic images. However, I I think this is where I want to go. Okay, so you can do this with your eyes open or closed. Obviously, if you're someone listening and you're driving, please don't. I wouldn't do this at all while you're driving, but definitely not with your eyes closed. Okay, <laughs> And a couple uh, underpinnings that'll help make this more powerful for you. So Kristen, you said we want to get out of our brains and that's so uh, perfect for this work. So I'm going to take you through an eidetic image, but an eidetic image is nothing like a visualization or a fantasy, nothing like it. And that's because it's not controlled by what you think should happen or what you wish was happening or what you want to happen. And even though we're going to do an image that has to do with parents, oddly, it really, the experience has nothing to do with your parents now because we're actually looking at what's going on inside of us. In this case, mm-hmm. inside of you, Kristen. So it's going to look like your parents and it may even be applicable about your parents, but it's actually, we're looking at inside you. And that's what everybody's going to get a chance to do. Look at inside them. So don't control the image. Let it have a mind of its own. It, it may sound like history and memory, but it's not. And if you allow those ideas, and I'll, I'll remind you, if you allow yourself to have an experience that you're not controlling, that's where it's meaningful. All right. So here we go. See your, your parents in the house that you think of as a home, the house you grew up in. And this is from a time when you're still growing up, so it's not present. You're seeing your parents in the house that you think of as a home, the house you grew up in. Where are they and what are they doing? Right now, look at the image, and I'm going to give you a few more instructions and then I'll come back. Right now, as you actually look, Where are they and what are they doing? And when you're looking, I'm going to give you some time. Some people need way more time, so pause the recording, and some people don't. As you're looking at your mother, where she is, what she's doing, your father, where he is, what he's doing, whatever way you see it, even if you grew up with step parents or whatever, notice how you feel as you're looking. Notice how the young you feels looking at mother looking at father and then where is the young you in your image right now again not where would you be not where should you be but where are you literally showing up in your image right now how old are you and again how are you feeling the young you 
And yeah, let's let's stop here. And Kristen, show us in the present. So keep watching your image as you tell us. That'll help you see things you haven't seen before and deepen your connection to it. Tell us what you're seeing and feeling. I am seeing um, a house that my parents actually still live in. Um, my mother is in the kitchen. My father is outside working in the yard. And I am actually sitting across, you know, at the counter from my mother. And I'm, I would say I'm feeling kind of um, blank, maybe. Okay. Or a little, and maybe a little guarded. Actually. A little guarded. Okay, actually. Okay, good. So you're good. You're noticing that. Good. Now, how old are you in this particular image? I surprisingly am not super young. I'm probably about 14, 15. 14, 14 yeah. 15. And by the way, how old are your teenage daughters now? I have an 18, a 15, and a 13. Okay. All right, so you're surprisingly older than you thought you might be, 14 or 15, and you're sitting at the counter across from your mother, your father's in the yard, and at first you thought you were feeling blank, but actually now you notice that you're feeling a little guarded. Mm -hmm. Okay, now continue looking through your 14, 15-year-old eyes. Don't think about any meaning because that's the, the, brain, the thinking part of your mind. We're not there. So keep looking through your eyes your young eyes, and noticing what you see, first of all, as you're sitting there, and continue noticing what you feel as you see. And by the way, to you and everyone, it doesn't matter if it's vivid or vague. That doesn't matter at all. So, go, so take us with you. Keep looking. Do you want me to yeah, explain? Yeah, okay. as you see it. Uh, yes, please. And so this is a very interesting process for me because things come across my head and I'm such a thinking person. Mm -hmm. um, and, but what I see is, uh, what I think I see is I really like my mom. Like I'm fond. I'm very fond of her. Mm. And, then, and then I don't feel totally safe. Okay. Um, yeah. Now keep going. Yeah, and... A little bit, um, like just not totally safe. Like yes. maybe she's not able to take care of everything. Yes. So just like any human being, you're feeling two feelings. Safe. You re excuse me. You, you're fond of her and you really like her and yet not safe. And also mm -hmm. a little guarded. All at once, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, when you look at her, you feel like she can't take care of everything. What is it, anything about what you're seeing in this image that is creating that feeling in you right now? Or anything about the whole, the house image itself, because father's in the yard. Something is happening that you don't feel totally safe in addition to the fondness. What's happening? What do you see? Not history so much, but what are you actually seeing? What am I seeing? Yeah. Not feeling, but seeing. Well, the difference in this process is that you start with the images because straight feelings are generally come straight from history. So first mm -hmm. look, really use your young eyes. I'd suggest... To, to help you to look through the young eyes if you're not already doing that. And then when you see what you see, then notice how you feel. See if you can change around your usual way. Mm -hmm. It's something around she's, and you know, this doesn't make a total sense because I feel like I need to say they were great parents, but um, yes, yes. she... Um, can't totally it's like she has fears like she can't totally take care of herself like okay. that that's what i see and i feel yes all right this is great and i'm going to tell you why i'm saying that in a bit but 
she, you're seeing that she has fears, that she can't totally take care of herself. And at the same time, you're, you're saying, hey, look, they were great parents. So remember that, well, this part you don't know yet, but when you do the house image, it always takes you to the place that has to do with the thing you say you want. It's gorgeous like that. It's really these these places inside of us have an enormous amount of wisdom and everybody's does. It takes my breath away how much so sometimes. So remember, we're looking at inside you, not just, not really them. But mm-hmm. there's, there's, and I'll talk about that more later if we have time, but there's, so she has fear. She can't take care of, yourself, of herself and you're feeling guarded and not safe. Now, notice what the young you is doing with the guarded, not safe. And when you sensing and seeing that she has these fears, how is a 14, 15-year-old you responding? What are you doing energetically or any other way in response? Well, the thing that's so funny is yes. I'm, I'm irritated yeah. and I'm mad because she's weak. Like I'm, I'm somehow feeling that she's weak somehow yes. not all the way everything she should be like should be you know yes yes <laughs> yes yes now why do you laugh Kristen oh because I have teenage daughters <laughs> say more though and because it's also it makes me a little sad yeah. even then because I want her to be well I want her to be able to take care of her and me and Yes. To be everything. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. And there's this realization she's not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes me sad. Actually, I don't know if it makes me sad then or it makes me sad now, but both, maybe. Yes, yes. So, you as a teenager are feeling, I'm looking with you, so you're seeing that she's weak. You're feeling that she's weak. You want her to be able to take care of herself, but she's not. And it makes you angry, irritated, maybe sad. Now, see, I'm going to go a little deeper with this with you. Is that okay if we spend a little more time? I would love to. I just need to say to people that my mom is great. My mom is very highly, extremely functional. (laughs) So, you know? Yes, so I'm going to say this again because this is so hard for people to keep in mind. What happens is that there's some, well, you you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I see over and over, that there are subtle, our parents always do their very best. They just, they just do. They do the best they can. And there are, they still have their history. They still have their own history. And one of the things, um, I'll just say this, one of the things you mentioned in the beginning was that you didn't want your daughters to have the same roller coaster as you. Uh So the image is very honest with what it shows. It doesn't mean anything bad about the parents. It's showing you a part inside you. Please see if you can take it in a deeper level, not just for you, but for everybody. Not about badness about parents, not at all, but that there's a certain sensitivity in you, a certain acknowledgement of you, of, of inside you, when you're seeing there's something about your mom that triggered you into feeling that she wasn't taking full care of herself and you needed or wanted her to. And that left a certain kind of impression on you. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us how? Because I don't want, because as long as you stay into this is not about my mom being a bad mom. She was a great mom. You're going to get less from the experience for your daughters. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, I guess, see, I had it and now I've kind of lost it a little bit, but there is this way in which well, speaking as an adult, a way in which I want to take care of myself completely. And I can see how my own fears might get in the way of them. I have dealt with anxiety in my life and yes. have primarily have been way, way, way 
don't deal with it anymore the way I used to. I'm just- yes. So the very intense thing about this work, this is why I took it on after I actually quit working with people for years because I didn't think regular all the other kinds of work I was certified in was enough. And I went back in because I realized that despite decades of my own personal work, which had taken me really far, when I first did an image like this, I thought, oh my goodness, look at what's there. Look at how I'm actually responding when I'm not controlling it. It was, it was there on a different level. That didn't mm-hmm. mean that I hadn't done tremendous work. I had or I wouldn't be able to, under, to appreciate eidetics. But I could see the next layer that was there. So maybe that's true for you, Kristen, that we're just talking about the next level of it. Does that mm-hmm. make any sense? Yep, it does. It does. Okay. All right. So let's go back. You said... Uh, you said that I want to be able, I want her to be able to take care of herself. And you said, I also want to be able to take care of myself completely, but I've had some fear about it. So now you, the listener, you might not have children, so you might not be able to do this part of it, but you can always watch Kristen's image. Kristen, look through your teenage girl's eyes. Pick one maybe. Mm -hmm. to look through her eyes at this image of you as a teenager. So if you can do that, see Mm -hmm. through your daughter's eyes as she looks at this image of you as a teenager with your mom. What does she see? What does she feel? I think she probably feels first. First, let's go go through. Let's go her through eyes. Eyes, to interject. Let's go through her eyes and first what does she see? Then the feeling. She sees me sitting. Yeah. Feeling a little bit sad or anxious. Yes. And but and liking my mom. You yes. know. Yes. Yes. And so that's what she sees. Yeah. And I think she she feels uh, through her eyes yes compassion like understanding yes how do you feel looking through her eyes at you i feel compassionate i mean like empathetic um okay uh Because I get it. Like if if I'm looking through my daughter's eyes, like I get it. <laughs> okay, I like Maybe it. it feels familiar. Maybe it feels familiar. So so I, I get the sense that some there's a lot happening inside your mind about this. Would it, would you care to share it? No, I just like I, I really want I really think the feeling that I get is is she's not judging me. Like she, as the 14-year-old me, like she sees that and understands that why I feel a little unsafe and also understands the feeling of looking at your mom and going, you know, you're not perfect. You know, yes. there's stuff you're not doing. And yes. Right. Okay. To take care of me. Yes. yes, yes. All right, now go to the, let go of this image and now look, see that you're in the house that you live in now with your current family. Mm-hmm. And now see an image of you and this daughter. Mm-hmm. Tell us in the house, tell us first, where are you? What are you doing? And what's happening between the two of you? Let it have a mind of its own. Don't try to figure it out at all, of course. Just look at it. What do you see and what do you feel? Um, I see her uh, trying to get feeling sad or upset about something herself. Yes. And me feeling um, unable to help. Like, okay. Helpless. Yeah. Um, okay. I, 
Yeah, I see. I see me. Um, maybe a little bit having a hard time letting her feel it without me feeling it. And yes. maybe I did that. Maybe that's what I did a little bit with my mom. Okay. Now see that a cool wind comes down from the heavens and it's a gift from the gods. And see that it's this cool wind swirls around you in the house there with your daughter and you feel the coolness. And then as you feel the coolness, watch as you number two pops out of you there, number one. So the wind swirls around you. Number one, you feels the coolness. Out of number one, you pops number two, you. Number one disappears. What does number two look like and do? Number two. Um sees her daughter and she feels safe like trusting mm. and not as not as um like bound like reaching out trying like energy trying to fix or support yes Just more trusting Yes. Okay. Keep looking through number two's eyes, seeing your daughter this way, feeling what it feels like to not have that energetic fixing going on, that need to fix or that over overreaching out, right? Mm -hmm. Keep looking through number two's eyes and notice what you see as number two, what you feel. Just take another minute or so to deepen mm -hmm. this connection with yourself. So number two feels much lighter. Yeah. Like, just trust, like, things are wow. fine, and just free of the need to take care of wow. other people, you know, just, yeah. and, but, because trusting, yes. they can, they can do it. What can you feel? Is there a, a visceral feeling of physiological? Oh, feeling? yeah. I like, I totally have it in my chest. I actually am going to cry. Yes. Yeah. 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 I can feel the freedom. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So I'm just going to speak to the listener for a few moments here. Okay. So and also, this is for Kristen too, but I want to speak about what just happened. So, but first to the listener, as you've been having your experience, Kristen just had her own very personal and unique experience. And we did about three or four different eidetic images to try to loosen the hold of the brain and get to a, that wiser consciousness that we, we've been talking about this whole podcast. And so... What Kristen asked for was to be able to not um, to let go of her t three teenage daughters and not cling too tight. And so they wouldn't have to go on the same roller coaster ride that she had been on and not take on their sadness and their challenges. And I know you can all relate to that about somebody that you care for on whatever level. And so when we went into the first, so the house image, which is the first one that you did, gives you a chance to actually experience the problem. So what does Kristen see? Kristen sees one of the origins of the problem, which is that mom who was a great mom. And she clearly, Kristen clearly has enormous love and respect and affection and fondness for mother. And in the image, Kristen isn't feeling totally safe and not like everything is taken care of. It's very much what's happening in the interaction with her daughters. So, and she's afraid that her mother isn't taking care of herself, which is very similar to the daughters not doing enough and not, and Kristen not feeling like it's totally taken care of. So the dynamics are really similar. And we did a few other things. And then at the end, we did the image of the emanation, which is the cool wind. 
if you did that with Kristen, you got access to a different aspect of yourself. That's what that is, an aspect that you normally don't have true access to. And it wasn't a fantasy, as you could tell, because Kristen was deeply moved by what she experienced. She felt the freedom. She felt it in her chest. She felt the freedom of what it feels like to be herself and yet not feel like she has to take care of someone else, like she kind of did in the house image. So this is the way that the eidetic, brilliant mind opened up to offer Kristen a place to connect to a bigger part of herself, a different part of herself. You as the audience may have had a very closed experience, a very open experience, but I'm going to talk to you at the very end about some ways that you can find out more about what specifically happened to you. But before I do that, I want to see where Kristen is and what else you would like to ask of me or to say. Yes. Well, that was really, truly, um, I really had, could feel a very big difference of freedom. Yes. Of really just that freedom of tr- and trust, which has been something that, that I, you know, lived, I lived with anxiety for decades and was able to have been able to, through my own work, really step out of that feeling. And yes. yet I was still having that feeling tied with my children. Yes. Um, and, um, and, but I could really feel that free feeling of freedom that I've been able to feel in my own life that I never used to be able to, yes. but had not been able to yet transfer to my children. <laughs> yes, because it was a very, it's a very sensitive place. It's another level, right? It's right. just another level. Right. So I am really hoping that some of the, um, the listeners were able to you know, it was my very much my specific situation, but maybe they could visualize something themselves because that was very powerful. Yes, I, I, I'm glad it was. I could feel it too with you. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is not so... Yes, I'm, I'll just stop there. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So I guess... Um, well, I guess I almost don't even know what to ask at this point because... Um, is there a way in which you can keep, um, I guess, just you, with that visceral reaction and then that visceral feeling of freedom yes. that I got, I now have that. And so I can now tap into that feeling. This is where this work is, um, it is different. And my understanding of the mind is, I think, different from many, the way you hear most of the time. So, you you were very specific about pointing out, you know, so instead of feeling, I should look first, right? And you did that several times, which was great, and it was what allowed you to go deeper here. What most people do once they have a feeling is they try to find it again. They try to, like you said, tap into the feeling again. Mm-hmm. And that is, in my opinion, not effective. Just like Bonnie Raitt sings, you can't make your heart feel something it won't. You Mm -hmm. can't make yourself feel a certain way. If I had said to you, just feel more freedom and trusting, you know, you know what those feelings are, but that wasn't accessible right there Mm -hmm. because it's tapping into something deeper. So the the work is the ongoing work of really breaking through and, and being able to live from that place. You made a big dent in that. And I don't know, it may have been enough. My typical, when I work with people, they look great on the outside. Family, friends, work, career, spiritual life. They they have all of it going on the outside, but they want more inside. That's what is the character, that's the character of the people I work with. They want to keep expanding. And so... The, the work, the eidetic work, or the process is to keep, to go back in and spend some time without the brain interfering, without the conscious mind interfering. And that makes a connection between the person and what's already inside of them 
which is what you experienced. I didn't give you freedom and trust. I didn't give that to you. It was already there. It was just that the the crust of history was still covering it to some degree. Mm-hmm. Right. So now with for the ongoing work, because this is very curious, I mean, obviously just to explore a little bit and explain. So do people then continue to work with images? Is that how you... Yes breakthrough okay very much so because just because as we all know the conscious mind will just take you back to what you already know mm-hmm. and this to me see what you what we didn't talk about was my own professional history but i actually um well we did to a certain degree but i i refused to work with people with any of the modalities i used to work with i refused mm-hmm. i actually quit a thriving 100% full 100% referral uh, waiting list only practice until I rediscovered ideas because it just wasn't enough. Wow. So what kind of things do people change? What kind of changes do your clients make? So for example, one woman is um, had uh, uh, very often people come, a couple of people I'm thinking of right now were, cor- were in corporate and they were hugely successful in corporate. And then they decided, no, I want to run my own business. So now they're entrepreneur- entrepreneurs. And what, what, then what happens is when you run your own business, you encounter yourself in the middle of your own road all the time. It's an mm-hmm. incredible opportunity to grow. And so, you know, you do things like focus on the, the mistakes, so to speak, of focus on the shiny objects and do everything but the things you really need to do or have all the fears come up about promoting yourself. Am I good enough? Um, what if, what if, what if, all of those things. So, one of my clients, for example, when she opened her own business, she found that she was working pretty much 24-7, had no life, no friends, Was the business was really having a hard time. And as we worked together, for her, the first thing that came back was her life. That's where she wanted to focus first, and that's what seemed to be coming naturally. So she started um, taking much better care of herself. She started having, you know, leaving work at a certain er, much earlier time. She stopped micromanaging her her staff, which I mean, she was it was crazy the detail that she was insisting they consult her about, so to speak. And she started making five, six times in a month what she had made the you know the month that same month the year before. She's getting huge. Um, uh, really uh, recognizably name corporate accounts, and she she's not immersed in the negativity that was coming up before. Wow, that's pretty example, profound. It is. It's just one example, obviously. But I mean, I, right. it's important to me that people, like we said in the beginning, have the changes they want. Right. Right. Well, so one of the things I always really like to ask is um, is to ask um, people what, if there's any advice they could give people or tips or actionable steps so that listeners can go out and start to um, experience some type of transformation. What would you recommend? What I would recommend truly is to immerse yourself and I'm going to show you in a moment how to immerse yourself in really being honest with yourself about what you're doing from your conscious, rats, overly rational mind. Notice in what ways it's serving and not serving you. Notice if you are giving that part of your mind so much emphasis and credence that other things, let's say, like your relationship are going by the wayside. For example, as I have gotten into a, this eidetic consciousness, I, I realized how much of the time I was uh, making my husband of almost 40 years wrong in my head and to him. And it was awful. And I really saw through an image similar to you, what you and I did today, Kristen, I saw myself through his eyes. Now, it wasn't like he hadn't been trying to tell me. He had. <laughs> but I wouldn't listen because after all, I was right. So 
from that place where I was basically mentally divorcing him for decades in my head about 80% of the time, I truly feel like we have a house of love now. And he feels it too. So to do that, let me let me give you a suggestion. I'm going to give you the my my spiritual manifesto, which is very close to my heart. I just created it. It's the cutting edge of what I'm doing. And it's the ancient secret to boost your spiritual practice and your life. And again, it's a manifesto on how not to live a life half lived. So if what you've been hearing here uh, resonates with you, then you can pick up my free manifesto. It continues the conversation Kristen and I started today. It will also give you a way to experience what you just did here, but more deeply for yourself. You'll understand exactly what Kristen, you just asked, how your mind is stopping you and what you can do to expand it. And there's also a great story about another podcast I did where there were two podcast hosts and the woman was pressuring herself to have a successful business, but at the same time, she was doing everything but that. So pressure and doing everything but that, which is what we do. Mm -hmm. So it was taking her in 100% the wrong direction. So you'll see that story and um, she's practicing doing exactly the opposite of what she wants. And you can get it at www.myspiritualmanifesto.com. Just click send. It's yours. And again, you'll get an exp- uh, a way to experience eidetics on your own also. Wow. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Wendy, for your time here today and for leading me and hopefully some of the listeners through, yes. through a powerful experience. I um, and I appreciate the reminder to everybody to to really look and be honest with yourselves about about um, how you're living um, and whether you're living from integrity and or giving too much power to your mind. So, thank you, Wendy, again, and to your thank you, listeners, and uh, thank you for being here. And until next time, go out and remember that you do hold the power to change and transform your world. Thanks. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today. 